midst of the hustling and bustling of life, you need something to really calm your nerves. And that's why today on this episode of Not Your 9 to 5, we are featuring Sarah Mata, who is a certified yoga teacher who left the banking industry to begin all of this experience of self-awareness and self-mastery and self-love in yoga. And she will be sharing her experiences with us on this episode. Uh, Sarah Jermakani Matad and uh, I'm a yoga teacher right now but before that I graduated from university with a bachelor of uh, in banking and finance and I worked in a bank for four years I then moved to a microfinance company for another two years so that's six years and then uh, I ended up pursuing my um, yoga training and got certified and now I'm a yoga teacher. <laughs> I never felt fulfilled. I even started losing myself and um, basically I think I was doing something just for the fact of graduating from university and having a job and making money, not thinking about myself at all. And uh, in 2013, I started doing yoga. And when I started the practicing yoga, I realized that I was never connect I never knew how to breathe. So the fact that I started connecting with my breath made me connect more with myself. And I started realizing how disconnected I was from myself and how much I didn't love myself. So with yoga, um, I was able to pursue what I wanted in life and that's doing something that I'm passionate about. Yoga made me take the step of quitting my job and pursuing what I really wanted in life and with time, with practicing yoga, with time I realized that this is what I wanted to do because People have a wrong concept about yoga. People tell me I'm not flexible, I can't do yoga, uh, but it's not about that. Yoga is internal work. Um, and throughout our lives and with the noise we have in cities, I don't think people have the time for themselves to, to actually know what's really going on within. Instead, we are controlled by our ego and our ego really grows more with having labels on ourselves that, okay, yes, I have to have this position to be happy or I have to uh, work in a bank to be happy or I have to make this amount of money to be happy, but it's not about that. It's all about doing something you love and something you're a bit passionate about. Yoga can be physical and yoga is mental. But the yoga that we do that's physical is the easiest form for you to uh, grasp yoga or to, to have yoga in your life. Because usually people, for example, for me in my case, I started yoga as a physical practice. And because I continued because I realized that once you let go of your judgments and what you think about your body, your body actually responds to you. So I started yoga, I couldn't touch my toes and now I can touch the floor with the years. You just have to be, yoga is love, yoga is patience, yoga is self-acceptance, yoga is letting go of your ego, it's self-awareness, it's um, like everything that you need to work on yourself within and people around you to make your life what you want. When I went to my yoga training, I went to, I, I got certified in Bali, which is in Indonesia. And for me, that step on its own, me traveling alone for one month was stepping out of my comfort zone. And when I got there for my training, I realized how we are programmed in a city 
and how things in life affect you because we're like we're, we're a bit spoiled because it's made me open up to the simple things in life uh, in the training I was able to face a lot of conditioning that I used to have and let go of them and I started realizing when you have these conditioning and you say okay yes I'm not happy because uh, I didn't get my favorite t-shirt or I'm not happy because um, I, w I didn't go out to the best place because this is the community we live in, this is how we're conditioned, but that's not true. You have to be happy inside to be happy with other people. You have to be kind with yourself. You have to be compassionate with yourself. You have to be in control, not always, but as much as you can with what's happened, the noise that's happening in your head for you to be able to give your best. Like if you're compassionate towards yourself, you will be more compassionate compassionate towards people if you love yourself more you'll be able to give more love if you're accepting of yourself if you're patient with yourself you'll be able to be patient with people so um, so yeah having that said like I'm, I'm going I'm talking more about the spiritual side of the yoga because people already see the physical side so once you change this side of your of your thoughts or your uh, um, whatever you think about yoga, you will start loving the physical part. You'll start wanting to do the physical part. My challenges with yoga is, uh, do you know how people say, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but how people say that energy is actually transferable. So sometimes when I walk into a room back in the days, I used to walk in the room and then my mood changes and I used to blame it on me being moody. Of course, I'm not blaming other people about it, but, but really I started realizing with time how affected I am with the energies, how, how the energies around me actually play a role on, 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 like on mood. Like energy is really transferable. So one of my biggest challenge is Sometimes, without me knowing, I finish a class and I'm a little bit unsure about myself and I start judging myself. Did I do it right? Are people satisfied? Were people happy? So I start having self-doubt, which I think we all face. And then my students will come to me and will tell me, wow, Sarah, that was such an amazing class. And then I go like, oh, so my challenges are here in my head. You know, so it's all what you tell yourself. And other challenges that are a bit obvious are, obviously you leave your job thinking that it's easy uh, to face the world, but it's not as easy as you think because it takes a lot of self-discipline on my, on my side. It takes a lot of uh, self-discipline, self-acceptance. -accept it takes uh, commitment, a lot of commitment. And you know, when you don't have a job where you have to go to an office from nine to five, sometimes you think that you have so much time. So by the end of the day, you realize that, oh my God, the whole day passed. And like time, time management also, you need, you, like that's, that's a challenge I face. Um, in Lagos, I face traffic, which is obvious, which is okay. Something I can face and something that everybody will understand. Um, and also a major thing that I think I would like to share with the world because I'm not advising anybody to leave their job for yoga although if, if it's something you want to do you just you will face a lot of challenges with you will not have a stable income especially when you're trying to form a community for for yoga and here in Lagos I'm actually impressed on the response of people with yoga and we already have a small community which is nice but um, like my challenge basically uh, another challenge is also to to it's it, you grow but it's a slow process and it takes a lot of patience My favorite thing about yoga is the satisfaction I feel after giving a yoga class. 
So I don't know, remember when I was telling you about my challenges, for example, the traffic, the energy transferring and everything. With all that, it's just things outside noise. But once I get to my class and I finish my class and I see the smiles of my students and myself, uh, th that's just super satisfying. Like any doubt that I was having, am I doing the right thing in my life? Should I invest time into uh, into starting something new, should I get a job and do yoga at the same time? Then I go to a class, I finish my class, I, I, I feel good, I look around me, I see my students satisfied, happy, thanking me, and they think that I'm, that I'm the one, okay, yes, I am guiding them, but their effort, they, they don't see the effort they put into the class, like we're all sharing this energy that's just, it's just so beautiful and just so satisfying. I was talking a lot about how yoga helps you and is important for you internally and how it helps you look at yourself more and love yourself more. But there's also the physical side of yoga that this is why when you after a yoga class, you really feel relieved because we tend to store a lot of tension in the shoulders, a lot of tension and stress in the shoulders. And we have so many moves in yoga that help you release that tension. So basically we have this move that you can do uh, if, you have, if you really have a job where you sit in an office a lot on your laptop, on your computer, you need to release tension in the shoulders. You can basically just bend your elbow behind your back like that grab that elbow and try to get the opening in your shoulder. So this helps you actually release any tension stored there. So you always have to balance. So if you do, do it with the left, you always have to do the right and hold it. And always remember in yoga, you need to always connect to the breath. So it's movement plus breath. So you go to the movement and you breathe. And of course, if you're more flexible, you can always grab your hand. But everybody has options in yoga. This is the beauty of yoga. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, or if you're advanced, it doesn't matter. You always have to listen to your body. And the most important thing is not to compare yourself to others. So that's when your practice becomes a nice practice. This is also good for, for, spi for the spine. <laughs> you have your feet together, your hands under the shoulders, squeeze the elbows in, and just lift your chest. This actually helps with, um, with strengthening your spi spinal muscles. And we barely pay attention to our spine, and it's one of the most important things to keep healthy. So I think every day before you sleep, or in the morning, or during your working hours, Try to do this. Put your hands under the shoulders, squeeze your elbows in, and just try to lift the head. Eventually, with time, after doing it so many times, maybe you'll be able to lift higher too. This is another amazing move. All right. Uh, it's okay. it's okay. This is this is this is a very good example for everyone <laughs> to see how the mind is 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 registered to be so hard on yourself, and you think that no, I'm not doing it right. But this is how your body is today, and once you start accepting what your body is, your whole uh, m uh, perception changes without you knowing. Everybody you feel needs, there's something, yeah. Uh, you know, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That we don't know. This is, yeah, you see, moment. you have abundance inside you that you don't know about. That's we, we're distracted by everything around us, mm. and because of how life is, we forget to be grateful about things. And practicing gratitude, by the way, that's something also very important. If you get yourself used to waking up, listing three things you're grateful for, with time your perspective, your mindset, the way you approach life will, will change. This is not your regular nine to five, but this is my life. And my name is Saira Jermakani Matel. 
yoga teacher in Nigeria. <laughs> and from yoga to baking, to meet Barbara, who left the world of engineering to become a baker. She tells us her story now. My name is Barbara Urubu. Um, I have a degree in electrical electronics engineering and I have a master's degree in oil and gas management. Um, I kicked off my cake business in 2015 and this was as a result of my inability to, to get a job. After several trials to apl apply for jobs and submit my CVs, I wasn't able to get any jobs so I decided to learn the craft of cake decorating and kick off my cake business. I've been five years in business so far, and I would say it's been a roller coaster as well as very exciting. Um, with me right here, it's a birthday cake requested by a client who is having her 40th birthday as well as her fifth anniversary. And here I am trying to do what I know best by decorating her cakes beautifully. What excites me most is the fact that I get paid for making cakes, to be honest. That's what excites me most when I get paid. However, I get excited when um, a client gives me the opportunity to express my um, arts through cakes. Like maybe a customer calls me up and tells me, okay, I need this cake um, to be made for so-so-and-so day. I don't have a design in mind, so just please do what you can do to make my cake beautiful. So it excites me that the customers trust me enough to, you know, create something beautiful for them. And then when I start decorating these cakes and designing, I get really excited as I go on with the job. There are lots of challenges. One, I would say um, staffing human resource. It's really difficult to get someone who who um, who understands the, the, the crafts and then who has the skill of baking and decoration. We have to go through the stress of training them. And then after you train them, they come up with excuses and tell you, oh, I need to go and start my own business. Then you have to start all over again to teach someone new. And that challenge we've experienced is um, access to funds and then loans, grants from organizations who help um, small businesses. The pandemic really affected my business in the sense that um, events were put on hold and people were told to stop weddings, stop parties, bars were closed, shops, and these are our major customers, people that requests for wedding cakes, birthday cakes. So we had a drop in sales. However, regardless of the, the drop in sales, there are some customers who still hosted home-based birthday parties in, with small number of guests. So they requested for smaller cakes. So what we do, what we did to address this issue was to get a product to fit what the customer wants, smaller cakes and then um, smaller cakes and smaller, you know, um, other pastries. So in situations where I want to give up and, you know, just quit the cake business due to stress, um, due to um, my inability to reach my goals, I, I, I come across customers who, who appreciate the, the craft so much to the extent they refer me to other clients and encourage me, if possible, get me more jobs. Such experiences keep me going, like such, such encouragements I get from my, my customers, they keep me going and encourage me to continue the cake business. And, um, and also on social media, when I post pictures of my work and I have followers and um, supporters come encourage, oh, beautiful cake, keep it up, we love this. Those are, um, the encouraging words I get that, that that make me continue continue the crafts. 
despite being you know <laughs> trying to give up or trying to despite being tired of of the whole thing the fact that i am an employer of labor is actually very encouraging because i've always had um plans to empower to empower people and to train currently we are currently training some students um, on the craft of baking and decoration so it gives me joy when I'm, I'm able to transfer knowledge to somebody and then the person goes ahead and starts their own business I will not leave this job to do a nine-to-five job because I enjoy the crafts is my passion. I mean, it's it's. I earn money from from the it's, the business is lucrative, so I don't think I'm going to leave this job um, anytime soon for a nine to five job. Apparently, I do not have any experience in engineering because after I completed my my degree I went straight into baking so I haven't worked I've never worked a day in my life for anybody it was straight to business although my major plan was to get into an oil firm practice engineering you know because this is what I studied in school but then due to the situation of the country lack of jobs and all that I found myself in business my experience as a Baker has really brought me lots of accolades, encouragement, and support from family, friends, even strangers. Um, over the years, I've grown in a very fast way. Like I've, I've been recognized by a whole lot of um, both national and international, you know, organizations. So I think this is this is where dream lies, this is where my growth lies, and I think this is what I was born to do. The most exciting moment for me is decorating. Um, in situations where a customer says, I want a house, can you make a house cake? Or can you make a car cake? Can you make a bag cake? It challenges me and it's also exciting. Um, at first, I have my little fears like, okay, can I achieve this bag this customer wants? Can I achieve this car? But then it also challenges me and makes me, you know, put in my best in order to realize what the customer wants. Um, so this is really the exciting moment for me because at that point, I'm focused on what I'm doing. Um, without distractions, I put in my best, pay attention to the smallest detail just to achieve what I need to achieve. This is not your regular 9 to 5, but this is my life. My name is Barbara Undubu.